Hi everyone, my name is Eli Smith, and the topic of my choice is economic freedom and its effect on three specific South African countries. The countries of my choice in my study are Mozambique, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. My hypothesis is that increasing the economic freedom of those three nations, will, where, where economic freedom is lower than in developed nations, will also increase the economic growth and the human development of those nations. So why economic freedom? The Heritage Foundation collects data on economic freedom on all the countries in the world, and they also find a high correlation between high economic freedom and the Human Development Index. Their data state that there is a 0.87 correlation, yet in, some, in Southern African countries, there's typically low government integrity, there's low human development, and there's also low economic freedom. The dependent variables of my study are HDI and GDP per capita, HDI being the Human Development Index. It's the measure of a country's development, calculated by the UN. It includes, but is not limited to, life expectancy, average education level, access to sanitation, access to shelter. And I will be taking the log of HDI for the percentage change. For GDP, I will be taking the GDP per capita in 2011 BPP dollars. And this, of course, is the average consumption of a person or per person in a nation. I'll also be taking the log of that so that I can determine the percentage change for an increase or decrease in economic freedom. My independent variables are the economic freedom variables and a, uh, and a total trade variable that is going to be my control variable across the countries. The total trade variable is a percentage of GDP. Economic freedom is being defined by Heritage Foundation as the fundamental right of every human being to control his or her own labor and property. It's measured by 12 criteria, property rights, government integrity, judicial effectiveness, government spending, tax burden, fiscal health, business freedom, labor freedom, monetary freedom, trade freedom, investment freedom, and financial freedom. For the purpose of my study, I am omitting labor freedom, judicial effectiveness, and fiscal health because there are large gaps in the data for over those years that I'm studying between 1995 and 2017. I chose 1995 because it's just after apartheid ended. Economic freedom is scored from 0 to 100. The data are collected annually on every country in the world. And as I mentioned earlier, I am one of those three. So, my data are collected across the world uh, and focus on Mozambique, South Africa, and Zimbabwe for the Southern African region that I'm studying, Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. for the North African region as a comparison, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, and Switzerland as a Northwestern European region to compare. I chose these regions because they are mostly high in development, high in GDP, and high in economic freedom, Mexico being the exception or the outlier but Mexico is still considerably higher than the three Southern African countries that I'm studying. In my regressions, I found that there came to be a remarkably high R-squared of roughly 0 0.999. I determined that there is likely not a correlation problem with my data, and I also took the fixed and random effects, and I also used a Hausman test to determine which between the fixed and random to use. With the Hausman test, I ran into a negative chi-squared to begin with, so I had to create several interaction variables. By creating these interaction variables, I managed to get a properly usable chi-squared and determined that the fixed effect regressions were the appropriate regression to use for both the GDP and the HDI models. This is currently my model. I have two separate models, one for each dependent variable, and this is as you see. It will be the dependent variable determined by the property rights, trade freedom, government integrity, tax burden, and business freedom, government spending, financial freedom, monetary freedom, and total trade. For the three African countries, I created interaction variables for property rights, trade freedom, government integrity, tax burden, and business freedom. I also created three country dummy variables for the South African countries. My current conclusions. For GDP, uh, only the variables that you see above you right now, see in front of you, are 
found to be statistically significant at the 90% or higher intervals, and it leaves 19 other variables that were not found significant at the 90% or higher. This does not match the results of other studies or Heritage's claim that economic freedom will bring GDP growth. For HDI, this is where we run into the biggest problem with chi-squared. Only these variables that you see here were found to be statistically significant at the 90% or higher interval, and that left 15 other variables found not significant at all, which again does not support the claim made by other studies that I am using in my literature review, as well as Heritage's claim and the correlation that we saw earlier in this presentation. Moving forward, I'm going to collect more data, I'm going to run new regressions and analyze the new results, and by the time that you see the next presentation, this will be complete. Thank you and have a wonderful night.